Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Graham. I'm the owner of Bike Bros, a bicycle shop in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. We finally have some of the new 2021 Marin Alpine Trail XR bikes in stock here. Um, so I'm going to tell you basically all about the spec on this bike. I have spent a fair amount of time on the Carbon uh, Alpine Trail 2. Um, so I do have some experience from riding this platform of bikes, not from riding this exact model. But I'll give you a little bit of thought on sort of geometry, on spec, on this bike in general. Um, but I just want to show everybody this awesome bike. This is maybe the most anticipated bike that I can remember in the last few years of being in the bike shop business. Um, if you like this sort of stuff, looking at new bikes, please consider subscribing to our channel. Um, give us a like. Um, we're here basically to try and give you all the information you can get about these new bikes, especially the ones that are hard to get good in-depth knowledge from, uh, from other sources online. So let's get into it. So in front of me here is the 2021 Marin Alpine Trail XR. In the Alpine Trail family, there is a $3,500 Alpine Trail 7, which is an alloy uh, version of this bike, as this one is. And then there are two different versions of this in carbon. This one, the XR, basically is the version that is designed for the rowdiest of riding, what I would almost call a bike park bike. That comes down to it having a coil shock on there, largely, and then also being sort of an up spec alloy version of the bike. So I'm going to tell you all about the details, the specifications, um, and a little bit of sort of ride review that I've done using the carbon version of this bike. So let's get into the details and the specifications on this guy. So made for fun is basically that's Marin's slogan that they run by and that's exactly what this bike is designed for. Um, this is a $47.99 bike in Canada. Our bike shop is in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. Uh, $35.99 is the US price on this bike. I'm going to show you the spec on here then. We've got a Shimano XT rear derailleur, 12 speed SLX cassette, so that means 10 to 51 tooth range on there. We have Maxxis Askai 29 by 2.5 wide trail tires on here, and of significance is the fact that this is a double down rear tire on here, so that is. Um, basically the enduro really tough casing and it also makes for a pretty heavy tire but for performance it is an awesome option the ass guy is pretty much the um, aggressive high-speed sort of uh, tire of choice it isn't the fastest rolling tire ever so for the trail riding portion you suffer a bit but when things get a little bit rowdier or steeper that is a tire that uh, that is really popular the tire is mounted onto a Marin bike's rim, which is 29 millimeter internal width, so um, sort of in the standard range of tire widths these days. You've got really nice chainstay protection on all of the, or almost all of the uh, 2021 full suspension Marins. We've got an FSA gradient crank on there, so a nice alloy machined crank with a nice alloy narrow wide chain ring. This bike is 150 millimeters rear travel and 160 millimeter travel fork. Um, but for angles, it is much more like what we're seeing on 170 mil travel bikes. So I will touch on the angles in a bit here. Uh, rear suspension, RockShox Super Deluxe coil. So that coil will change depending on the size of the bike. In size small and medium, it is a 300 pound spring on large and extra large it is a 400 pound spring but that is one thing to keep in mind if you're thinking about this bike is if you're heavier or lighter than sort of what would be average for a frame size you may need to order a different coil uh, to get the, the bike to ride properly for you. The bike is based off of a single pivot design so this is what Marin calls their multi-track system um, so multi-track and single pivot seem to be two things that don't agree with each other, but it's a strange name to describe a suspension design that actually works surprisingly well. So we've got our main pivot there. We have a 
seat stay pivot there. So this is what's considered a linkage driven single pivot. That seat stay is then driving that and then driving your shock vertically. We have room on the frame for a water bottle on there. So that seems to be a make it or break it for some people. Internal cable routing is pretty standard these days. The distinctive gusset that we have at the top tube seat tube junction. A nice one piece forged rocker link on the top here. Last year, this bike would have had a two piece welded rocker link. So that is a minor change um, just in some of the bits and pieces between this year and last year, as well as quite a major change to the geometry between the two years. Um, a big part of the geometry changes is the fact that these are longer than the previous versions of the Alpine Trail, slacker head tube angle, and steeper seat tube angle. As far as dropper post, we have the X-Fusion Manic on here. Its um, amount of drop will depend on the size of the bike. So on a small, it goes from 125 millimeters. On an extra large, up to 175 millimeters and medium and large are both, I believe, 150 millimeters drop. Just show you this nice detail on the top tube with the way they've done the graphics on these guys. I think it looks quite good. The nice red deckling matching the coil and the fork. So I spoke of geometry. This is a 78 degree seat tube angle on these guys, a 63 and a half degree head tube angle, and I always use a size large as a reference, and in a large in this case, we're looking at a 480 millimeter reach. Um, I mentioned that single pivot before. That allows this bike to have a 430 millimeter chainstay, which is quite a short chainstay, and that sort of shorter length ties pretty closely into that made for fun idea, is the shorter the rear end on the bike, I find it to make the bike that much more playful, even though everything else about the bike says, hey, let's haul ass, go fast, do steeps. That shorter rear end means that if you're getting to anything that's requiring wheeling, manualing, um, tighter cornering, it really helps the bike um, to have a little bit more of a playful feel to it. Our cockpit, we have these Deity handlebars, which are a, an 800 millimeter wide bar. Marin's lock-on grips, an SLX shifter, Deity copperhead handle or stem here, and that's with the 35 millimeter sort of clamp size. So these are big, tough, strong handlebars. We have the Shimano MT420 brakes on here. So this is a couple series below the Dior level of brakes. You still get a four piston brake on this bike. I can show you from the back side here, or I have the magic of technology to go over to this bike here. And that's what that four piston brakes look like. It's a 180 millimeter rotor on the back and then a 203 rotor on the front on these guys. And being a four piston brake, all of the Shimano four pistons will share the same uh, brake pad shape, so you would be able to upgrade this to some of the fancier brake pads that belong in the sort of XT family of brakes. The fork is a RockShox Lyric Ultimate, 160 millimeters travel with a 42 millimeter offset, so it's the shorter offset originally made popular by Transition being the first company that really pushed the idea of short offset. What that really does is it allows for when you've got that really slack uh, head tube angle, a little bit shorter offset. I find it makes the bike um, not suffer from sort of the steering flop as much as having a long offset and that uh, slack head tube angle. Showing the attention to detail on this bike, we showed that double down rear ass guy. On the front, they actually use EXO Plus casing. So that is one level less durable, um, which is a pretty common enduro racer sort of trick. Um, the rear tire being the one that'll much more often take the brunt of sliced sidewalls and stuff like that, just because you've got so much more weight typically on the rear tire. So on this guy, the next thing I will talk about is its ride characteristics. 
and who this bike is for. But that's pretty much, we've got the summary of the parts and a little bit about the geometry on here. Next, I will cut to me talking about who this is for and how it rides. This is me in my office. I just realized I forgot to tell you the weight on this bike. 36.1 pounds, and you can see I've got a Marin sign in the back of my office. So yes, we're fans of this bike, so this is not a totally unbiased review, but we're fans of these bikes because they ride awesome and they are as fun as they say they're made to be fun. So back to the video. So being 150 millimeters rear travel, 160 mil travel fork with a 63 and a half head tube angle, nobody's gonna confuse this bike with being a short travel trail bike or a cross country race bike or anything. That said, this bike is still designed to be able to pedal up, um, to enjoy the fruits of your work and to really have a bike that's gonna be capable when it comes to steeps and high speed riding. Um, of details on here that really matter, Things like this coil shock here, if that's properly weighted for your body weight, it's not going to really negatively affect how this bike climbs. Some people will think that that means that the bike will bob more easily. What you're really getting with a coil shock is a little bit less adjustability, but a little bit more small bump compliance because you're not fighting any sort of friction between seals on an air shock. So that's the big thing that you're getting on a bike with a coil shock is great small bump compliance and maybe a little bit less as far as maintenance down the road with air sleeve kits, but the small bump compliance is going to be the big thing. What makes this bike climb so well is that 78 degree seat tube angle, which really helps to um, overcome the negative effects when you're climbing or riding on flatter ground. Um, of having a really slack head tube angle. So at 78 degrees, this bike will feel a little bit unusual for your seating position when you're riding on flat, especially if you're used to uh, old school geometry. But once the bike is pointed uphill, you're gonna have something that's gonna actually pedal up quite well. So the climbing, it can do it. It's not what it's designed to excel at, but it does it and it does it quite well considering the capabilities on the way down. Um, on the way down, we have basically a fully new school geometry on this bike. So it's going to uh, handle high speed cornering really well. You're going to have to concentrate with the slackness of the head tube angle on really weighting your front wheel. So that means you're going to have to feel your triceps carrying your weight a little bit more um, to really get the most out of this bike in cornering. You will also find with a slack head tube angle that this really asks you to lean the bike more than it does steering with the handlebars. So that uh, basically those two things, weighting the front wheel and then steering through leaning rather than steering through turning the bars is something that um, you're gonna have to learn, but that also helps you to really get the most out of the performance on this bike. I spent a fair amount of time riding on the Carbon 2 version of this bike which will have basically the same sort of riding characteristics. And I was a little bit shocked that um, the 63 and a half degree head tube angle um, was less noticeable than I thought it would be on the negative end of things that I noticed. Um, but it's still, yeah, it rides like an awesome trail bike. A big part of this bike that goes unsung in its handling characteristics is these Askai tires. So that's both the stickiness of the compound on there and the fact that having a double down tire, if you've heard people who have tried the tire inserts, they will talk about the ride characteristic of the bike changing a bit. And that is that your, your tires are no longer pinging off of roots or rocks. They really just absorb that sort of stuff and you can ride a bit softer pressure, get the most out of your tires um, and they're gonna have a little bit more support for you. So. Um, while those ass guys are responsible for this maybe being a pound heavier than it really could be if it had trail tires, it's also what's responsible for it being very, very confidence inspiring when it comes to the high speed hauling. So with that said, that also means that if you wanted this bike and wanted to give it a little bit of a different attitude, if you put some lighter tires on here, like a dissector rear and then a DHF on here for tire combo, you might shave off a little bit of weight and also have a bike that has a little bit more sprightly trail bike sort of feel to it. So it is a bike that 
if you needed a one bike quiver, you really could sort of have this and maybe a couple sets of tires that depending on the mood, depending on who you're riding with, where you're riding, you can really alter the bike to fit your attitude. So those are my thoughts on the bike, how it rides. I'm just gonna show you a few more close-ups that I may have missed while we were talking about other things. Uh, I hope you like the fact that I parked two of these bikes with the different side facing the camera. This gives me an easy way to show either brakes or drivetrain side. One thing I didn't mention on that rear shock, you still do have a climb lever on there. So it does bring the sophisticated sophistication of what makes good uh, air shocks, brings it to the coil shock world. So this is a really, really good spec for this sort of money. Um, other things I would take into account, um, I will just interject my own personal opinion. Um, these levers, I find them to be quite long on the four series of brakes. So I would just consider riding the brakes even further in than where we have them set up here to truly get one finger braking. Beyond that, at this price point, you may find, I would guess, if you were going to find things that you wanted to upgrade on this bike, it would be those brakes, um, at very least putting in um, some finned um, metallic brake pads to get a little bit more power out of them. Otherwise, that would be something down the road, like you've got the main things being a great suspension design, great geometry, great drivetrain and suspension. Um, things like brakes and wheels, I would leave those as things that are um, easy enough to replace down the road. And those would be the two things I would consider is brakes and wheels on this guy. Uh, Marin made a really big effort to give us the basis of a great bike in this case. Um, but as is the case with many of their bikes, I would say the one place that leaves you with something to upgrade is the wheels. Um, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I was talking to another customer earlier today and what we were sort of talking about this is that a lot of companies will put like a low end but branded wheel set on um, onto their bikes to try and make you think, oh wow, I actually got a set of uh, race face wheels or whatever on this bike, yet they're still entry level, um, but you're paying a little bit of a premium for them. In this case, Marin just gives you wheels that'll hold those tires in place until you got a little bit of extra money and then you can get onto something that truly has a high end hub um, a high-end rim profile and you can maybe change the bike's attitude at that point but at least the entire time until that happens you've been on a bike that you've been having a blast on and absolutely loving. So this is the 2021 Marin Alpine Trail XR one of a four Alpine Trail family a 150 160 millimeter travel 29er it's made for fun, it's made for going down, yet it's also made to be able to get you back to the top without necessarily relying on a shuttle or a lift. You could ride this as a trail bike. You would probably still be focusing more on the descents and just living through the climbing abilities. Um, but that seems to be an attitude that a lot of people are making. I'm Graham, this is Bike Bros. We're a bike shop with a phone ringing in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada and hopefully someone will answer that there we go um yeah please give us a like a subscribe comments down below i try to answer most of them although that's becoming a little bit tough and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next bike thank you